You are listening to Super Co-op Squad, episode 28. Days later. Weeks later. Leap year? Reboot. Reboot! Reload. Reload. Are we going to start this episode? <laughs> Cut this out, Johnny. Hey, how's it going today, guys? Thank you for joining us on the Super Co-op Squad video game podcast. I am one of your hosts, Johnny Mack, and I am joined uh, with my fellow host, Garrett Laney. Reboot! And Joshua Gerard. Blah! Wait, that was terrible. Blah! I can't do it. It's what fine. are you it's trying fine. to do? Blah! Blah! Thank you. <laughs> The gunshot, <laughs> the machine gun thingamajiggy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Edit this out. All right, guys. So every week uh, we sit down and we just talk about the latest and greatest in news, video games, video game releases, pop culture, anything from last week that we loved or enjoyed or thought was cool, interesting, or or, or important to gaming or pop culture. We're going to discuss here, guys, about an hour and a half show for you guys before we get started. We're going to give you the spoiler warning. So if you don't want to be spoiled on anything we're going to be talking about or discussing, this is your chance to go ahead and pause. Go ahead and grab the link in our uh, details and description from wherever you might be listening to this episode. And there'll be a link to our show notes. Go ahead and click that link. It's going to take you directly to the, the, the details of this episode, what we'll be discussing, and all of our kind of pieces for our conversation, as well as videos and everything or links to the website where you can read what we're discussing. Um, if you want to skip past anything, there'll be timestamps. Use those to go ahead and make sure that you're not spoiled. But if you're all good, then we're all good too. Let's just get this podcast moving for today. So it was a decent week for gaming news, but I think more so it was big for pop culture. Uh, the Writers Guild of America and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers uh, avoided a pretty pretty nasty strike. We'll be talking about that. Um, quite a few games released uh, this uh, this May we got Prey, NBA, a few others. We'll talk about those, what we, what we liked, what we didn't like uh, coming up. We'll have a little bit of fun with an opinion piece about video game saturation. How many good games is too many good games in any given year? So we'll be talking to you guys about that and what our individual opinions are. To start off the podcast, though, we'll be talking about the Writers Guild strike. Uh, so this just wrapped up a couple of days ago. So a three-year contract was negotiated between the two parties, again, the Writers Guild of America and the Alliance of uh, for Motion Picture and Television Producers. Um, this is pretty much going to avoid a situation going into this summer TV season where a nasty strike would have had all writers and writer producers pretty much blocked from from working on their shows or any scripted uh, television or or digital media uh, shows. Uh, pretty much the issue, just in a quick nutshell, before we go over our thoughts on what this means for, for us as, in, as uh, consumers, uh, the WGA, they wanted an increase in pay as well as additional healthcare benefits for their, uh, for their members. Over the last two years, they've had a pretty significant decrease in their, uh, average pay for their writers, even though the amount of TV shows that have been scripted and, and ordered have gone up. And that decrease has been about 18 to 23% on average for writers in, uh, in scripted television, um, areas so this can be directly contributed this can be directly contributed to short order shows that are being ordered by digital subscription services and even cable networks um where as opposed to the normal tradition where a show would get 22 to 26 episodes they're looking at you know 13 episodes on these uh, on these networks and then the healthcare issues they have no job protection during parental leave and they don't even get pto for parental leave uh so what are your guys thoughts about the situation and was it fair and uh, what does it mean going forward uh, you have something to say, Joshua? No, I was going to say that's a really good summary. Should write a book. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, let's see, where was I going? <laughs> <laughs> was it fair? Was it good? What do you think about it? Uh, so, uh tough to say if it was fair. Um, I think, I suppose it, it, it's always fair. I think people who, who do these jobs and should get, you know, equal pay or, or benefits that they, they want. Or need uh, obviously not to the extent where you know now the the studios or or the motion pictures are going out of out of business out of business and all. But you had mentioned that um, even though th th there's been a decrease for like writers and and uh, who else per writing producers, you had mentioned before that uh, writers working on this have seen a decrease in pay uh, for you know between 18 and 23 percent uh but even though there's been a an increase in all these television shows and everything um you know the amount of shows that we're getting um and it it kind of balances out because if you're if you're doing so much where you need a lot of writers and everything you can't 
pay everybody the same amount if if you're doing all this extra work. Um, at the same time, no one wants to work for peanuts, you know. I can I can see what you mean there. So to to some of I think what you're trying to say here is if there are more people working in a field, then you don't have to pay as much to any individual person because there's more opportunities for you to grab somebody else. Yes. If there's only 25, I mean, let's use small numbers. If there's 25 top tier writers compared to 80, you know, to, to grab a top tier 25 guy, you got to entice him with something. But if there's 80 guys that are top tier, then I don't have to pay you XXX. I can just pay you XX. Yeah. Cause some other guy will always take the, the lower amount, you know, right. some, some guy just wants a job. Yeah, I, I can see that being a small issue. I don't, I don't know if that's my thoughts, but it's it's a good it's a it's a good way to view it. You got anything? Yeah. So, I think it's good that they address certain issues. Healthcare is a huge thing. Uh, having a family or starting a family to have parental leave that's important. I mean, imagine Johnny, if you were not giving parental leave at your job just because, like, no, you have to work. Like, how is that fair to you? So, I think it's good that they address those issues as far as pay compensation. I uh, can't really tell. If you no, know, they deserve more money based on the amount of work. But for this guild to have a strike, a lot of people had to have felt the same way. So is it something where the entire industry is feeling that they're underpaid? Or is there so much work out there that now they're expecting more money because I could have been doing this, but you got me doing this? Well, I'll give you some numbers. Uh, it was a large amount. I think over 70% of the guild members uh, from the Writers Guild that were not satisfied with their pay. Um, but again, if you ask most people in any field, are you happy with your pay? Yeah. You're probably going to say, no, I'd like to make more money. So that seems kind of skewed, right? Cause no matter how much you might be making, you might always want to make more. Yep. So that percentage is, you know, in my opinion, biased because who is going to be like, no, nah, I'm fine perfectly where I'm at making money. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but you're right. Um, what I think is it goes, it goes two ways. If they're getting paid hourly, which I highly doubt for a lot of these bigger writers, but if you're getting paid hourly, if you're getting short order shows from Netflix or Hulu or even, you know, Game of Thrones type stuff or, or, um, HBO. Yeah. Or HBO shows, um, Westworld. Those are 12 to 14 episodes. If you're getting paid hourly, then that's part of it. I'm sorry, but the shows nowadays have changed and that's just how your, how your industry has evolved. And because of the the less less uh show less episodes per show, yes, you're getting paid less because you're hourly and you only have fourteen episodes of work to do compared to twenty two. Um, I look back at like the eighties, Garrett, or or even you, Joshua. You you watch a lot of shows. I know you're more of a TV show guy for cartoons, but back in the day, a TV show like would come out, a cartoon would come out, they'd get eighty five episodes in a season. Yeah, imagine mm-hmm. those guys getting paid hourly or whatever they're doing compared to guys in the nineties or now where you might get twenty episodes for your cartoon. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the writers are getting paid per episode or, hey, we have a season. You're going to get paid to make this season. So that's my next point. I really don't think they're hourly. These guys are get at least on the bigger side. They're probably getting paid bigger dollar salaries. Mm. Um, and yes, yeah, so I, I feel they're probably getting paid either by episode like many of the bigger TV show uh, actors do or they're getting paid per season. If that's the case, then I can see their salary going down on the on the episode portions, if I'm getting paid twelve thousand dollars an episode, and there's only thirteen episodes, then yes, I'm going to get less money, even though I'm working on this show maybe for the same amount of time, because the work involved in producing a high quality show has changed significantly from oh, yeah. what we saw eight to ten years ago. If you you know if you watch a primetime network show now compared to them, there's a lot more that's put into it. Um, and again, that's kind of part of the the industry. The yeah. industry it, it evolves and it changes. Um, that's not to say that what you get paid shouldn't evolve and change, but I don't think it's fair to say, well, look 10 years ago and look now. I don't think it's yeah. fair. You know, that, that doesn't seem. Things were very different back then. Right. It, it, things have changed. Um, but I mean, I guess this is the good thing about a union, right? Like they go to bat for you. So yep. that's what, you know, that's what keeps them in line. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I can't fault anybody for wanting to make more money. Yeah. But at the same time. I don't think it's fair to go, well, poor us. We weren't making very much money. Your industry has changed. And for people, for many people in this country who don't have a union to go to bat for them, you just don't get a benefit. You know, for instance, you know, I can think of many times, younger times, you know, let's say, let's say you're a young supervisor making 11 bucks an hour. And that's higher than minimum wage now, but yep. 11 bucks an hour. And then minimum wage goes up to, to $11. 
you might get a 20 cent raise. Whereas before minimum wage was 10 bucks, so you had an hour increase, or I'm sorry, a, a dollar increase. You only have a 20 cent increase over your 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 lower peers. There's no one to go to bat for that person working at McDonald's yeah. or whatever. Now I understand it's a different difference in money and what they've done for school, but it still doesn't seem fair to me. Yep. So any counterpoint? No, um, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, okay, pretty cool. much all the way. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so you know, just just hypothetically, what would a strike have meant for entertainment consumers in the next six months? Heroes season two. Yes, that's my first <laughs> thought as well. <laughs> Remember what happened in the last strike? Yes. Oh well. In the last strike, that's when we had that huge rise of uh, of all those um, reality TV shows. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't have any scripted TV shows coming out for a small time because no writers were getting work. So they had to get a lot of amateurs and skag, scabs. And they had, you know. Skags, I, like from Borderlands? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And they like I Love New York and Flavor of Love. And oh, all those are my shows. shows. Rock, Rock of, of Love. Yeah, Rock yeah. of Love. All Rock those shows of came. Love. But the thing is. It would have been more detrimental now because look at all these high quality, awesome network shows that we're getting now. Right. You wouldn't have gotten, you know, all these CW shows. You wouldn't have gotten Walking Dead. You wouldn't have gotten Agents of Shield. You wouldn't have gotten probably the, the Netflix shows that we're getting because it's still TV. All these episodes and work that they're putting in, you wouldn't have gotten Game of Thrones. All of this would have been put into a, put to a halt and now you're doing reruns reality shows and they have to do something to fill the void because no one wants to write and create new content until well, they, they couldn't write they contractually they could not work well, on their show that too yeah and it's it if it would have happened again it would have definitely hurt yeah i mean we would have still got these shows i mean the strike's not going to last more even if they would have striked it wouldn't have lasted more than a year but that's a long time that is a long time and what that means is shows get put on hiatus and never brought back or, or they try to go ahead and move forward with show with <laughs> scab writers a la heroes to heroes uh, get like you said and the season just tanks that was a show that was the biggest show yeah, on tv yeah. at that time network tv and it just imploded man um yeah so we would have had i think a decrease in a the amount of shows we got in the next couple of uh season you know summer and then going into the fall season and then b they would have been terrible the ones that did come out save the writers save the show yeah <laughs> <laughs> well done um thank you secondly um what does the adjustment in the contract mean for consumers going forward does it have any kind of impact on us as consumers of entertainment at all so this is always that weird kind of situation where i, I see that um actually south park had called to my attention many years ago Someone complains about one thing, gets their way. Now you can always complain about that thing and get your way. Uh, for instance, what, what I'm referencing is, you know, the whole uh, Family Guy episode where, oh, if you pull someone, if you pull an episode for this reason, now the pe- people of this group can pull it for that reason. Right. Where does you know, it stop? Exactly. So now this is constantly, this can continue, you know, after a while, if no one's ever satisfied. Which, as you pointed earlier, Johnny, if you ask the average person, you know, are you happy with what you're making? They'll more than often say no. Right. Yeah. So There's this, very, this very can few. easily continue yeah. until everybody's happy or someone's out of a business. Yeah. Um. I I feel that in in this particular situation, the uh the Motion Picture Association they don't have are the al- al- or uh, I feel in this particular situation the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers they're over a barrel because if all the best and greatest writers are part of this guild and you can't, you can't even work in the industry as a writer really without being a part of it. And then they strike, you don't have any option, but to somehow, some way acquiesce to their request. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I suppose you can just say, we're not going to honor the union and just start hiring whoever, but that has its own bout of issues. It'll, yep. be, it'll be nasty. Yep. I have nothing else to add. To okay, that. cool. Um, the thing that I think about is, these big giant companies that are producing these shows and and uh, and funding these shows, they don't like just giving out money. Even though this is a a win, maybe for the WGA in a way, they're gonna just find ways to to make it a win on the other side. So I look at the fact that they're you know in a lot of the arguments from the WGA, they're saying, oh well, we're losing money because of short order shows. Or in a lot of times right now, a lot of shows are going where they're they're producing their their episode. Only a few weeks or a few months in advance. So all that's going to happen is it's going to be kind of a tighter rein. 
So, oh, your show's not doing very well, then we're going to only order six next next season. Yeah. And then if it does good, well, maybe we'll go kind of every show will go Walking Dead style where you get six episodes or eight episodes, like a half season, then a break for four yeah. months and then another half season. And they can just shut you down based on that. So that that way, yeah, you're making more money. The mid season finale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and then that mid season finale. Oh, you know what? Pitch. I mean, sadly got canceled. It's not coming back. Yeah. And just boom. And then they'll just shut you down that way. So sorry, sure. what show? Pitch. Yeah. It's no, never, the female. Oh, pitcher. Never heard of it. Oh. It, w- it was a show that it it was like a, a what if with like the first female pitcher in the major league, uh, oh, major okay. league baseball. It's actually a really fun show. I liked it a what, lot. What, what station? It was on Fox. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, they'll do things like that. Well, everyone will have mid season finales and break for four months. They'll analyze if they want to bring them back for the next season. And if you didn't do well enough, you're gone. And you know, those things will happen or they'll just, you know, they'll just go in your contract somehow if you're not doing well enough they'll just pull you yeah and you won't get episodes made like i feel like they're they're only giving the the alliance you know they're kind of they're kind of tightening their own their own their own news because now they're forcing the alliance to make more drastic decisions to control the money they're spending on the show and their writers and their talent hey the mountain looks different this time i don't know that one game of thrones Oh, <laughs> there are like three different mountain <laughs> yeah. actors. They have changed them quite a bit. Yeah, I get it now. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, good for you, WGA. I don't know if this is going to fix your problems long term. And speaking of long term, this is only a three year deal. Yep. We're going to so, be in the same situation in three years. I think that's what Gary's exactly point what is. So if if this isn't going to be good, then they'll just renew the contract. If it's not going to be good or people says, oh, you know, what we're going to do. The same thing we did three years ago. We're not happy. We got to see a change or we'll strike again. So, I mean, three years, it is a decent amount of time to kind of analyze the industry and see where it's going. But who knows what can happen three years from now? Well, we've talked about peak TV in the past. And again, if you, if you haven't checked out, I believe it's episode 25. Um, what peak TV is, it's this era that we've been in the last eight or nine years where there have been a, there has been a drastic incre- increase in the amount of scripted TV that we get and the amount of scripted high quality TV that we get. There's going to be a bubble that bursts. There's too many great shows where you go, oh, that got canceled. This got only five seasons into the next season. If these kind of things happen where they're get where they're forcing, they're being forced to pay more money, they're just going to stop making all these shows. Exactly. I mean, that's what's going to happen at some point. You can't keep squeezing blood out of a stone. Yeah. Or the sorcerer's stone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got fan favorites, guys. You know how this goes. Every week, we pick 10 rapid-fire questions, and each host answers to see where we stand opposed and where we stand united in fandom. Play along and find out just what are your fan favorites. All right, so I had to pick this week, and you know me. I like to have a little bit of fun, make it a little rough. Um, this one is, you know, you're out with, let's say, your mom or, or, or your wife or your girlfriend or, or both. <laughs> and, okay and <laughs> that's you know, dangerous you, territory no, you're out you're hanging out you're going shopping or with whatever your wife you're, and your girlfriend sure you guys are hanging up making a day of it you get there they're... <laughs> <laughs> wife and girlfriend oh huh. yeah, that's that's <laughs> i was like yeah. you're real casual about your this. wife and your mother okay or your girlfriend and your mother okay there we go and <laughs> you know you don't you don't want it to happen but someone just disrespects them someone calls them a name or bumps into them says something rude you know just uh, just a jerk you got to fight this guy because you can't let him disrespect your mom and your girl. Like, you got to do something about it. And the this is, which one of these guys do you fight? Which one of these guys do you want to be the one that disrespects him that you don't want to, you know, you don't want to fight the other guy. So this is the guy you want to fight. <laughs> All right. I'm Tyrone. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Oh, you don't know that? Oh, wait, no. Mind. Actually, I got a better way to phrase this. Let me, let me. So, so these two guys, these two guys disrespect your mom. Not, not, not one. Both of them. You got to pick, you got to fight one of these guys, not just one. There's not just one. They're both there. So one of these guys, you got to stand up and fight and put this guy down. All right. So pick the guy that you're going to choose to fight that they just disrespected your mama or your girl. Choose your fighter. Choose your fighter. All right. You yeah. guys, you guys ready? All right. Nope. Yeah. This, I think this is going to be a fun one. I'm a lover, not a fighter. that to the gentleman how do we still not know that we're doing this yeah i don't know round robin take your freaking phone back you need the oh 
Sorry, I was thinking. I was thinking speed run. You can leave it over there. Actually, I'll just hold on to this one. <laughs> I, I knew he was thinking speed run. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Here we go. Because I saw the front of it. Yeah. All right, Gary. Here we go. Start it off. Bowser or Donkey Kong? How do we still not know we're doing this? What did I do wrong? You just call it's all of us. But you, you start. Go first? Mm, you're phrasing it like, all right. Okay, anyway. All right, let's... Garrett. All right, Garrett, starting it off. Bowser or Donkey Kong? Oh, I'm fighting DK. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Mario or Luigi? Oh, that's not fair. Fight Luigi. <laughs> no, come on. I'm not fighting my main. I'll fight Mario. I'm fighting Mario. Homer Simpson or Peter Griffin? I'll fight Homer. Homer. I'm going to fight Homer Simpson. Kratos or Dante? <laughs> Dante. Dante. I am fighting Dante. Darth Vader or Magneto? Magneto. 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 Captain Jack Sparrow or Captain Hook? Mm, uh, Captain Hook. Hook. Jack Sparrow. Frodo Baggins or Mini Me? <laughs> uh, mi- Mini Me. Frodo. Frodo. Solid Snake or Ezio from Assassin's Creed? Ezio. Ezio. Solid Snake. Ratchet and Clank? Or Jack and Daxter? Jack and Daxter. Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank. Ryu or Liu Kang? Liu Kang. Ryu or Liu Kang? Ryu. Uh, Uh, Oh, sorry. I didn't know. Ryu. Ryu. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's break it down. Uh, that That was 10 already? That was 10. One, two, three, four. All right. One quick. Yeah. All right, first one, Bowser or a Donkey Kong? I would rather fight a gorilla than a dinosaur turtle with spikes. Exactly. Yeah. That breathes fire. That breathes fire. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, babe. I can't, <laughs> can't fight I, him. I fight him. Does a butt stomp in his later games. I mean, Breaks he, my shield. Yeah, even pun- <laughs> <laughs> even punching him just would shatter your hand, I feel like, if you hit the wrong part yeah. of him. Yeah. Um, but it wouldn't be no cakewalk fighting DK. No, absolutely not. <laughs> he, he went toe-to-toe with Lil Mac. Yeah, it would not, it would not be good. Um, Mario or Luigi? I'm taller, so no, I could just punt Lu- punt Mario. Honestly, I feel like Mario's kind of a, a wimp, dude. He's mm. kind of he's kind of I mean if I could curse, I would call him all kind of names. He's have kind of you a weenie. played my Mario? Still. I know damn well you have. I, I'd rather fight Luigi. I'm sorry, Mario. I wouldn't want to yeah. fight Luigi. The most Luigi the most threatening Luigi's ever been was with a uh with the, a vacuum? Uh, vacuum cleaner. Have but- you have you <laughs> seen his death stare? There's something wrong with him. <laughs> there's something He's psycho. Deep, there's something deep and dark inside Within of Luigi. Him. Yeah, and you don't want to bring that out. So I don't want. I don't want to have to fight him and have that happen. Yeah, you don't want to catch him <laughs> riding dirty. Yeah. Uh, number three is Homer Simpson or Peter Griffin. Don't. Oh! Oh, me. I mean, I've seen that Peter Griffin really just go march. off on that chicken one too many yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, he can take a licking and keep on kicking. So. It's Homer. Yeah, not yep. to mention he just pulls whatever he wants out of wherever. Or and don't worry about the money or anything. He has a Peter Copter. Or the worst part would be the fact if he if he talks about you in a flashback and does something horrible to you. Yeah. So <laughs> remember that time, Johnny, yeah. that I Yeah, I wouldn't want that. Yeah, plus if he falls off a, be- a building, Spider Man will come and save him because yeah. he always no. gets one. No, he he's only already, gets one. He already used his one. He already used up his one. Who hasn't used their one? Joe. He's the only one that left? Because I know I know Quagmire has. I'm I think so behind on family. Cleveland right? might have also. I think he might have. Huh? Maybe just Joe. Cleveland did go one because they were rock climbing. <laughs> uh, Kratos or Dante? That was an easy one. <sighs> Garrett yeah. picked Kratos, didn't you? No, no he picked Dante. No, I am yeah, not yeah. fighting the God you of War. Dante. I didn't pick Kratos. No, no, he we we Dante. all we all picked Dante. I picked Dante. Yes, you picked Dante. Yes, because Kratos might just. Go. He'll do every and anything. To he you. killed his own family. Like I could just think about it right now. Like if he's walking and we're walking, he bumps into my wife from. I'm, Sorry, sir. She she got in your way. I didn't mean it. Like, <laughs> Apologize to the man. <laughs> I mean, at least with Dante, he's got enough chivalry where, like, you know, I feel like maybe if I'm like, hey, man, like, what happened? Like, he might. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, bro. You are not my brother. <laughs> no. I don't know. I feel like he might be. I, I would be a little more safe approaching and, you know, confronting Dante than Kratos. Um, he's got that devil trigger. Then, then why did you pick Dante? Because Kratos killed his own family and is the god of war. 
I'd rather take a bullet to the head than a slice to yep. the head. Ebony and Ivory. I mean, he he has swords too. He could slice you just as I easily. I don't think he chops heads off. I think he could. He, he could, but to. he doesn't. Uh, okay. Well, it's right to the gut. Bow. All right. Uh, Darth Vader or Magneto? I don't I- want to get force choked. I feel I have Amongst a better chance things. fighting Magneto. I don't Just, as long Darth as there's Vader. no metal, you're okay. Yeah. I have no chance fighting either one, but at least Magneto is an old man, you know? Like, he's old. So if I if I can, <laughs> I can walk up to him and be like, you know what, man? You just, you bump my girl. Bow! Just stuck and punch him one time. I might knock him out. No, I'll just shoot him with a wooden gun. You, ah, uh, okay. I see what you did Just there. make sure you didn't take any iron pills you, that morning. But you know, you don't have that. That's, you're leaving Olive Garden with your girl and, and you're- and I, your, always, I always carry my wooden piece. Why? <laughs> But yeah, Darth Vader, he punching him wouldn't even do anything. He's made of like plastic. He'll just, so. he'll just choke you before you can get to him. Yeah, that too. He busts out his lightsaber, it's over. Yeah, just just sucker punch that old man Magneto and, you know, hopefully. Saw what happened to all, all those troops at Rogue One, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. exactly why I didn't pick Darth Vader. <laughs> uh, Captain Jack Sparrow or Captain Hook? Hook's at a disadvantage. He only has he one has, hand? He only got one hand. But and he, if I have an alarm clock with me, he's, he's done. done. Yeah. Well, but, Horror you know, Gator. <laughs> you're you're you know again you're leaving target or walmart you know you don't you don't have an alarm clock with you i don't Not- ring 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 okay, fair, fair someone enough. texts you and he freaks out I'll, ju- I'll just go on youtube and put like alarm clock sound clock sound he just freaks Text- out 10 yeah. hours <laughs> i'd rather pick jack sparrow because i've never seen him like really kill anyone but one person he's too unpredictable though he's, he's only killed very unpredictable he's only killed one person barbosa and yeah. he didn't even... He look, didn't do a good job at that. Yeah, he didn't do a great job. <laughs> well, so, no, actually, he did. The monkey just happened to be there. What are you talking about? The monkey took the coin at the beginning, at the end of the first movie, and that's the only reason why Barbosa survived. What? what? At the end credits scene? Oh, did you not watch end credits back then? I did not. I never seen The monkey, at the, after the credits, took one of the gold coins, and remember, if you take the coin, you are technically That not, shouldn't bring Barbosa yeah. back, because he didn't have a coin anymore. It's anyone that... Never mind. It's We're only if you it. currently have a coin that you yourself stole. So Barbosa shouldn't have came back because all the, all his men didn't come back. Are you sure? Yeah, I am a hundred percent sure that's not how Barbosa came back. I think that witch doctor woman she brought him back. Mm. As a matter of fact, that is a clear plot plot point in the second movie where they go to this witch doctor specifically to bring back Barbosa. I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure now. Mm. I don't know if that's canon. I think no, no, because no, I, I think they just surprise. <laughs> she she does bring back Barbosa. Yes, just as a uh, uh, at the end of two, I believe. Yes. Pirates two, and that's the whole. That's the stinger, and then they have to go with her to go pull Jack Sparrow out from right, but Davy Jones locker. But Barbosa is alive because of her, not because of the coin. The monkey was just a, a evil monkey now because he took a coin again. So. I do remember Sorry. that. Though. I think that was just for the monkey, though. Yeah, I think just, just, the just, monkey. The monkey. just the monkey. The monkey can't die, which is why they keep shooting the monkey. Oh. I remember Jack Sparrow constantly shooting the monkey because he can't die. So, <clears throat> lawyer. <clears throat> <Come on. laughs> hey, you can fact check me all you want. I'm not denying anything. It, it's okay. Uh, so, Frodo Baggins or Mini Me? I picked Frodo because he's a he's a chump. He's just dude. a weenie, dude. I've seen Mini Me fight in those movies. I don't want to fight Mini Me. He, has, he kick you right in the shin. He has Sting. He he never killed anyone though. He has like, Sting, and he can go invisible. He will never put on the ring for one. Oh, he'll never put on the ring. Not like he has before, huh? He put it on one time on accident. If he puts on the ring, it's because he wants to run away, not to fight. And you. I'm fight I'm fighting post post you know Return of the King. So he's already dropped the ring, had his finger cut off. He you know he's done. How do you, how can you? Tell the time. Well, because I was in middle Middle Earth, and you know now we're in late Earth. Or anyway, whatever. mini me, I, th- I feel I can just shove him in the closet and be done with it. Wow, mm. it's kind of cruel, man. Hey, don't don't touch my girl. <laughs> um, Love so- you, babe. <laughs> so- <laughs> Big man protecting you from mini me. <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't need you to protect herself against mini me. Uh, she'd probably be protecting you from mini me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, solid Snake or Ezio. I'm more worried about Snake. So I'm going to fight Ezio. I'm not. Ezio will stab me in a heartbeat. I won't feel it. That's the thing. At least, you know, Solid Snake, usually his goal is to put me to sleep or like do it in a non, a non death <laughs> kind of mean. Depends on you how you what? play the game. Not, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is true. Also, he could just smoke himself to death. Yeah. yeah so- I win Ezio. Um, uh, probably should have switched back. Yeah. Solid- I want to fight a train assassin. No, I don't. You don't fight him. He just kills you. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's even go. worse. Like, excuse me, sorry. Hit my. Ah, you just. Requiescent. Requiescent. Pache. 
Okay. Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter? I only don't want to fight Ratchet and Clank because punching Clank would hurt. I mean, you, know, you just step on him you or just, something. You just kick him. Yeah. With your steel toe boots that you happen to be wearing that day. Uh, from Fresh off Olive Garden. I'm wearing my steel toe boots. Fine, you're wearing your Timberlands. I don't I'd, know. I'd rather fight Ratchet and Clank just because Jack is kind of like more of a grown man. Yep. So I, I don't want to go toe to toe. If I could fight a child, I'd rather. I have never played those games either sure. series. They're actually, hey. Ratchet and Clank is awesome. Yeah, Jack and Dax is coming to PS4. There you go. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm waiting for. Yep, Ratchet and Clank too. And last one, Ryu or Liu Kang. <laughs> I don't. I don't need a bicycle kick to the face, and that dude's a dragon. I don't okay. need a scar across my chest. First off, his name is not Ryu. You play. You play Street Fighter. I know. You see the iron, the i, the irony. The iron. I said the ironically. Okay. See the irony there. So you at least recognize it. It's really Ryu. Yeah, I just Thank like you. giving you a hard time. Okay. okay. You have a thing about names. I feel much better now. Like Laura, because her name is not Laura. Um. Yeah, I would not want to fight <laughs> Liu Kang. He's got fatalities, bro. At least Ryu will leave me living. Like I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna. Uh, He's got a Metsu Hadouken. Yeah, but everyone lives through <laughs> it. No one dies. Like, he never murdered anybody. The what? worst you get is a scar on your chest. Liu Kang will, like, kick your face off or, like, burn you, like, or eat you as a dragon. Nah, man. Or turn you into a baby. Yeah, or, oh, yeah, or do that. So Friendship. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no Liu Kang there. All right, guys. Well, that is fan favorites for this week. If you have your own list of fan favorites you'd like us to go ahead and read off uh, next week, feel free to email us. Uh, super co-op squad at gmail.com or hit us up on twitter at super co-op squad and uh, let us know what your list would be we'd love to hear from you and uh, have a user and have an audience uh, pick list uh, so may games and movie releases and games that we're looking forward to this month uh, so there's been actually quite a few games releasing in the month of may these are just a, a quick snapshot of some of the bigger games that we were interested in or, or thought that would have a uh, some sort of that we were interested in or have uh, some sort of kind of splash as they as they came out. Uh, so first game uh, releasing early this month is uh, Prey that releases um, May 5th on Xbox One. It's PS4. already out. <laughs> yeah, oh. by the time this episode oh, right. launches, you probably are already playing it. Nope, there you go. Um, I don't even know what date it is. Got a baby, whatever. Um, it's developed <laughs> by Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda. I'm probably going to pick this up. Do not care. Wow. Don't care. Oh, boy. Why? I uh, didn't have interest in it. They changed the whole thing from the, the original Prey, which actually kind of has somewhat some uh, interest to me. But uh, it, 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 I don't know. I don't care about the story at all. Okay, fair enough. Did you, did you like Dishonored? Never played it. Oh. oh. I, haven't, I haven't played it either. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dishonored is so good. Good yeah, game. Same I, like, I have the definitive edition. Thanks to you, John. Because wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I did yeah. get you one of those. Yep. yep. So, you, did I get you one too? I think so. I don't know if I input the code or not. Wow. Oh, I gave geez. you a free game code and you didn't use it? Uh, my PlayStation wasn't hooked up. Xbox. You could have done it on your phone. My Xbox whatever. wasn't hooked up. Um, it could have been. It was for any console. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I have it. Uh, I haven't played it. I do plan to play it one day. Mm -hmm. Just when I get to the time. It's cool. part of the backlog. All right. Yeah. So uh, this game looks definitely uh, intriguing, especially how you can mimic virtually anything in the game i just i'm not gonna spend 60 dollars on so it so it's just prop hunt yeah i guess i mean i did play the original prey which was pretty good for what it was but. yeah and a quick side note listener um if you want to go ahead and click on the show notes there will be a, a a video for each of these games that we're discussing as well as a link to their websites to go ahead and learn more about the game so if you want to go ahead and check those out really quickly uh feel free to go ahead and do that um, next game is NBA Playgrounds. That release is May 9th, so it's going to be uh, pretty much the day you're listening to this, if you're listening to it on the release date for the podcast. Uh, developed by Saber Interactive on Xbox One, PS4, Switch, and PC. This is as close to NBA Street and NBA Jam as you can get. I thought the same thing. I won't buy this, but no. it was very it, similar. It looks a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> realistic, you know, facial you know, animations and big heads on tiny bodies. That's always fun. I don't care. Because you're not a basketball fan. I'm not Garrett's. a sports fan. You're not a fan fan. No. You're not a fan of fans. You're not a no. fan fan. No. They make that weird noise when you try talking to them. Oh, that used to sound be like fun. a robot. Yeah. Um, Injustice 2. That's uh, Garrett's Woo! big one. Uh, that releases May 16th, developed by NetherRealm Studios uh, and published by Warner Brothers Interactive. I don't care. 
<laughs> you should care. I was literally just going to say it's been a big week for you. I don't care. Uh, no, I'm. Oh, I'm so pumped. So pumped. Is this out yet? No. Damn nope. it. Ten days next week. <laughs> What's funny is um, we hung out a little bit today, and you just kept trying to talk about injustice. Yeah, they got yeah, I'm trying to fate. get you pumped, man. He's a zoner. I'm trying I'm to like, get you pumped. Can we just play games? Like I, don't, I don't want to hear anymore. No, no, no. Screw Catan. Let's talk about injustice. Mm. Um, you know what though? I I probably will pick this up. I still got some monies um for some games, so I probably will grab this just just to give it a shot and hop back in. I'm very interested to play like Doctor Fate Swamp Thing. Uh, it looks like a pretty fun character, so we'll see what happens. I, I need some people that are serious into this game so I can get good. Uh, they actually have a, a a mode called Hot Seat, which normally you play online. People can join your lobby, King of the Hill kind of thing. You know, uh, whoever stays on top continues on top, and the rest of the people just kind of cycle in. Uh, but with the Hot Seat, it's more focused on like this the you know if you're streaming or whatever, and no matter win or lose. You stay on the top, and people just come to play you. That's brilliant. So that's probably where I will be because I will lose a lot. So you, being the host, yes, always play. Yes, always. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> that's yes. brilliant. For I streamers. will be streaming that. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I love that feature. That's, that's yes. amazing. Yes, Street Fighter needs that. The hot seat. Smash Brothers needs that. Every what, fighting game needs that. I wonder what the management's going to be like. Where you have like like a big hot streamer. How many people can join that lobby? I'm sure you, it can be to, set by him. Do you have to kick him out every like? I'm sure the management's pretty easy, but that's yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm sure when you create the lobby, it's like, oh, how many players? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it'll be what'll be cool is as they rotate through. I would hope that it will still show the record yes. against the, the hot seat person. Oh, yes. yeah. So if it's, if it's cycling through ten people and you played four times, it'll show your personal record against the hot seat. Yeah, that'd be pretty four cool. Four no, or versus the guy that's zero and four. <laughs> like, all right, here's an easy victory. You know, so and so eighty nine. Yeah. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, the Surge are releases May 16th. That's developed by uh, Deck 13 Interactive. Uh, Facing with Injustice. <laughs> good <laughs> uh, luck. And uh, also uh, published by Focus Home Interactive on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Now, you asked me if... No, if you were to ask me which game I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy this game. You really? Surge? It's a prepare-to-die game. That's why it's in my list. Yeah, true. It's, true. it's, it's a soul type of game. Don't know much of the story. It's... Don't it's care, the, do you? I've seen gameplay. I care. Yes, it's something. not about not about the story. You just care about the fact that you oh, get that gameplay. Oh, do I play. care about the story? No. Is it like Dark Souls? Yes, with robots. That's cool. It looks garbage. The gameplay. Wow. The gameplay looks bad. Hate is gonna hate. I'm sorry. Love is gonna I'm love. Sorry. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be a fun game, Josh. I'll let you know. Thank you. Just you say you say that about all game. prepared to die games, man. No, no. Dark Souls actually looks good. And if you if you're if you put the time into it, you can understand the story, and it's a good story. Yeah, well, I mean, this game looks intriguing. True. So, give it a shot. All right, and then we've got Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. Also excited. Yeah, releases on May 19th, developed uh, by Intelligent Systems, of course, published by Nintendo. Um, this is coming out for the 3DS exclusively. Yep, yep. here it's all about that DLC. Uh, I don't know. I'm weird when it comes to DLC and Nintendo games, other than Smash Brothers. Yeah, well, we we will come to that <laughs> in the in a little bit. Oh, with that uh, with that DLC life. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I did really enjoy uh Fire Emblem. What was that? Fates, Fates. on uh on on the mobile thingy. Uh, yeah, it didn't have no, as that much was Fire Emblem Heroes. Sorry, Fire Emblem Heroes. I like Fates too, but he- Heroes was fun. It kind of ignited my my love for the series, and okay. I think a lot of it people. Did its job. <laughs> it did, yeah, and I think a lot of people might pick this up solely based on that, which is crazy to think that a mobile a mobile device game might perpetuate and drive sales for a 3DS title. Yeah, that's something positive could actually come out of a mobile game. Hater. Hater, hater, hater. A hater. game to jump on that? I mean, Pokemon Go did that. Mm, I disagree. Pokemon Go was Pokemon was just massive already. I understand, but people that never play Pokemon that jumped into Pokemon Go, you think that they bought Sun and Moon? Had they already had a 3DS? Fair point. That's a, it's a possibility. They, they might have driven some, but I think that's not as drastic because Pokemon was already gigantic, whereas oh, yeah. Fire Emblem, at least in the states, a little bit more niche. Um, but yeah, I think you're still. I still think you're correct, but it's not the percentage of what it's going to do for Fire Emblem compared to the percentage that Pokemon Go did for Pokemon is is bigger for Fire Emblem. Yep. And this is a remake of a never released version yep. of an NES game back on the NES. Nice. Well, this should be fun. Yep. Um, so we've got your, your amiibos. I did mine. I'm done with the Amiibo game. Uh, Guilty Gear XRD Revelator 2 releases Excerpt. May 26th. Um, this is developed by Arc System Works and Team Red and uh, published by Arc System Works as well. I am not looking forward to this. Don't care. 
Well, do you really care for like those hyper kind of anime fighters? I'm not big on Guilty Gear. I've played it. You know what? I, I'm not a big fan of Guilty Gear because they have so many games come out. This is, oh, I think, their 17. Okay, no, 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 no. It's okay to have games come out, but like, you have 17 games? Like, that's just a lot You're for this You're talking about fight. 17 Guilty Gear games? Yes. I don't think there's 17. I think there are. I'm sure there are more versions of Street Fighter than there are Guilty, than there are guilty Gear. I, I don't think so. We need to fact really? check this. Oh, my. All right, so fact check done. Technically, there are 17, 16, I suppose, if you just count core fighting or actual fighting games, Guilty Gear games. But uh, there are far and away more Street Fighter games, so we both win one. There is a lot of ports, so yeah, we can we can agree to disagree. There we go. Um, all right, well, that's our list for uh, for games. That'll be out May 26th. Thank you. I already said that. I, I don't remember. It's okay. <laughs> um, so going into movies, and uh, we've got some good ones. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is, this is already released on May 5th. It's good. Uh, Did you see it? You I haven't see seen it. it yet. I'm going to see it probably in a day or two. Uh, stars uh, Chris Pratt, uh, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, Bradley Cooper, Karen Gillan, and the man, Vin, Vin Diesel. Diesel. Did you see Did you see it, Joshua? <laughs> yeah, I saw it on opening night, okay. Thursday. Okay. Nice. So, God. You guys liked it? It was really good. Okay. We should probably go back to doing these movie reviews. Maybe we'll Or I guess one. movie episodes. Maybe next week we'll knock one out. Maybe. It'd be nice. We also didn't talk about Power Rangers. We did. Because he hasn't seen it yet. Yeah. I will watch Guardians. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll probably watch it on Tuesday. So the day that this uh, drops, uh, I will be watching uh, Guardians. Make of the sure Galaxy. you stick around for those five post-credits I, scenes. I, I always do. <laughs> uh, we've also got uh, King Arthur Legend of the Sword releasing May 12th. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is, I think, it does warrant us giving a quick synop- a synopsis where you may not be familiar. So this is uh, young King Arthur. Uh, his father's murdered, and uh, his uncle, with the weirdest name, Vortigern, uh, seizes the crown and uh, robbed of his birthright, and with no idea of who he truly is, Arthur comes up in the hard, hard, mean streets of, uh, of Camelot <laughs> <laughs> in, the c- in the city there. Uh, he pulls the sword from the stone, and his life is turned upside down, and he is forced to acknowledge his true legacy whether he likes it or not. Uh, so this is starring Charlie Hunnam as Arthur, Jude Law as King Vortigern, uh, Astrid Burgess Frisbee as the mage, Aiden Gillen uh, for, as Goose Fat Bill, whose personal favorite is mine. He's uh, Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. And uh, Himon Hunso, I say his name wrong every time, I'm sorry, who is Sir Be- Bedivere, and he is uh, who? From uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, yes. Yep, so that's who you guys know him Full as. circle. Um, so I don't know if I'll be checking this out. I want to watch it. It looks, looks interesting. I won't. I won't spend no movie theater money on it. Don't, I, don't, I don't care. I still yep. have two free movie tickets that I haven't used from a birthday gift from like a year and a half ago. All right, time to use them. Yeah. Uh, and then late May, May twenty six, we have Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Men Tell No Tales coming out. Uh, so this, you guys should know how this goes, but pretty much down as luck, Captain Jack Sparrow has adventures you you don't need to know the rest that's that's about it it's uh, another pirate adventure. yeah it's another <laughs> pirate Apparently movie. it's the last one it's the final adventure that they're saying for jack, uh, Sparrow. For jack Sparrow. i'm yep. sure more than certain they'll continue the series with a new uh baby turner we'll we'll see i don't know how you have a pirate to the caribbean without johnny depp but or I'm orlando sure bloom i've always liked him personally more than uh, and you can do quite okay. well without orlando He's bloom okay see i i love no you can't I've always felt that the movies were better. The three, the three movies were better when they revolved around Orlando Bloom as his, his character's story, and Captain Jack Sparrow was kind of like the ancillary, like side character that you got c- comedy from in like the antics. I don't think he works very well in like Pirates Four and stuff as like the main like <laughs> kind of guy as his own guy. Like you need someone else to be grounded. In my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Johnny Depp starring starring as his old uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, Orlando Bloom, Javier Bardem, who uh, was uh, his Captain Salazar. He was in uh, No Country for Old Men. Uh, Jeffrey Rush is Barbosa, as always. Kevin McNally reprises his role as Gibbs. And we've got Kaya Scodelario and uh, Brenton Thwaites. Did you guys see the new, uh, the new Pirates trailer? Nope. Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, You'll see it when you watch <laughs> Guardians. Yep. It's, it's good. <laughs> Nice. It's really I didn't good. get it in Guardians. You didn't? I got a special... Sne- oh, it was an AMC special sneak peek thing. I saw it at the block. Hey, I also saw it at the block, and I saw a special sneak peek. Oh. There's zombie sharks. Well, there maybe, we go. Maybe I did see it at the theater. I don't know. I just saw it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this for sure. Good. Good, good. Need to rewatch number four, because I fell asleep when I watched it in theaters a little oh, bit. Penelope Cruz, bro? It was boring. You can't fall asleep with Penelope Cruz. She wasn't the greatest character for that movie, though. No, but it's her. Yeah. Yeah. And Blackbeard was really cool. 
<laughs> I thought it was really cool. You wouldn't know. You fell asleep. <laughs> I did not fall asleep for that much of the movie. Um, all right, guys. Well, that is our May game releases and what we are excited for. Um, if you got your own games you like, you're looking forward to, let us know about them and uh, email us or tweet them at us. So, second gaming segment of the podcast, gamer trivia. Uh, each week, two of our hosts go head to head in a best of five trivia contest. The winner will retain bragging rights next week and stay in play, and the loser will have to create next week's trivia. Uh, play along and see just how much gaming knowledge you have in gamer trivia. So, JG, Joshua, you went down last week. Yep. It was a good week, though, for you guys. You know, you guys both answered a bunch of questions. It came down to the, to the sudden death. So that was great. Uh, Garrett, you won last week, so you got one on, on the on the three-peat train. Let's see if you can uh, keep it going. Mm, is that right? That's one. Yep. You got one win. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So Sorry. this is number two. If you win, you're, you're trying perfect to keep score. that train going. Yeah, you did a Game Boy trivia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you did have the perfect score. Perfect. Perfect. So I enjoy doing this trivia just as much as I am competing against one of you guys because I know you guys both cringe anytime I do trivia. You know what? That's starting to change, actually. I'm starting to not like Gary trivia. I'm scared of it because I'm just going to get answers wrong. <laughs> So it's turning what I did into get what Garrett does. Yeah, I get Garrett trivia. And I'm scared. I'm just like, I so don't you're know. not scared of my trivia. Well, anymore? no, yours might be more kooky. Garrett's is just gonna be hard. That's <laughs> yeah, how I feel, yeah. and I'm just like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get four agrees, four so questions yeah. out of five wrong, and I'm gonna get the salty sudden wrong. <laughs> that was just because the one time Garrett did trivia, we had a combination of it, two points. <laughs> I think if we go back and we look, for me at least, I Garrett trivia, I consistently yeah. get one. I get one or, or two, maybe. I And you, too. No, I think you got none of Lady and the Tramp. And there's other times yeah. where I've gotten one. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. All right, but, okay. but it's on me this time. So I really like the retro days. Oh, boy. So this is, a, <laughs> this is an adventure. It's a space adventure. It might be even super... Those things don't come through the speaker well. Just, just tell me what you want. Wait, tell me. I, 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 mine's fine. I had to play with it. Really? Yeah, it was like, ding! Like, it was way too loud. Oh. Yeah. In, in, like, earphones. I had to... Okay. Just tell me what you want. What is this? Oh, that's a good sign for me. Is that Metroid? <laughs> that yes. is. I lost. The super of the Metroids. I've... I, I have one. not played Super Metroid. I never beat any Metroid. You don't have to beat the game to know about the game. We well, shall see. Probably, Garrett. You can enjoy your, your second victory we'll, here. We'll see. I feel oh. like you play enough Smash Brothers to maybe know a little bit. No, nothing. I doubt it. So well, Let's give it a shot. Let's go. Let's go. Mm, you got to build that confidence up. All right. So, Johnny, don't be scared. Power it out. You got this. Garrett, I know you like Metroid. Question number one. The Metroid series is known for having colored doors as a sign of progression based on power-up items you get in the game. Which of these is not a color for one of the doors? A. Red. B. Green. C. Yellow. Or D. Orange. Which of these is not a colored door? I have Garrett's answer, and I have Johnny's answer. Johnny, you said D, orange is not a color. Garrett, you also <laughs> said D, orange is not a color. Well, I mean, it is a color. It's, <laughs> it's not a colored door. I'm there sorry. It's not a colored door. No, orange is not a color, even though that's the color <laughs> of my hair. The correct answer is D, orange is not a colored door. See? Did you know this? Or yes. Did you, yes, I did. I only went orange. I'm like, well, she's orange. It'd be folly to... To okay. make the door orange. <laughs> Hopefully you're as lucky in these next questions. <laughs> so, Johnny, one point for you. Garrett, one point for you. <laughs> you really thought because her armor is orange that yeah, like, they wouldn't make an orange door back for then, contrast? Like, yeah, they would not. Exactly. They wouldn't make her orange and make the door orange. And it worked <laughs> out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Question number two. What is the name of the ancient race that helps Samus throughout her journey of the game? Is it A, Metroid, B, Chozo, C, Klingon, or D, Lassie? What is the name of the ancient race? I have, <laughs> I have Johnny's answer, and I also 
<laughs> Don't shake your head at me. I have Garrett's answer. You have both picked B. Chozo is the name of the ancient race. The correct answer is B. Chozo. <laughs> Why are you shaking? Why your are you head? so upset over there? <laughs> Let's keep going. Why? What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, no, I wanted to know. Like, what's the problem? Question number three. Just you're not going to give him anything. No. What no. are you upset for? <laughs> wow, you're not going to tell me. He'll question, tell you off air. Question number three. He'll tell you off air. All right, Johnny, that's a point for you. Gary, that's a point for you. Test. The score is tied two to two. Fun fact number one. At the time of its release, Super Metroid had the largest file size of any cartridge ever released on the Super Nintendo. One megabyte. 24 megabits. Woo. <laughs> Huge. At least for the time. All right. Move it along. Question number three. Super Metroid is what game entry in the Metroid series? So, in other words, out of a numerical order that games have released, what number is this game? Is it A, the first Metroid game ever released, B, the second, C, the third, or D, the fourth game? Answer this one more time. Yeah. So, A, is this the first Metroid game? Is Super Metroid the first game ever released? B, is it the second game? C, is it the third game? Or D, is it the fourth game? Johnny, I need a letter answer, please. Can you give me the answers again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. A, it's the first Metroid game. B, it's the second Metroid game. C, it's the third Metroid game. Or D, it's the fourth. Okay. Thank you for giving me an <laughs> eligible answer. All right. Both of you. Have picked C. It's the third game to come out. The correct answer is C. It is the third game. Wow. Johnny's on a hot streak. Garrison's not I happy about it. <laughs> okay. The funny thing is I knew both the answers after question one. Question two and three, I knew the answers. Okay. Yeah. Metroid on the NES, then Metroid 2, Return of Samus on the Game Boy, and then Super Metroid came out. All right. Johnny, that's a point for you. Garrett, that's a point for you. The score is tied three to three. See, this is what happens when you get your confidence. Gives you good times. All right. Question number four. At the end of the game, after you defeat the vinyl boss, how much time do you have to escape and reach your ship to leave the planet? Is it A, two minutes, B, two minutes and 30 seconds, C, three minutes, or D, four minutes? Repeat the question. At the end of the game, after you beat the final boss, Samus has X amount of time. At the end of which game? Super Metroid. Okay. At the end of the game, she has X amount of time to leave and escape the ruins of the planet that's about to explode. How much time does she have to escape? A, two minutes. B, two minutes and 30 seconds. C, three minutes. Or D, four minutes. I have Garrett's answer. And I have Johnny's answer. Garrett, you said A. You have two minutes to escape. Johnny, you said you have three minutes to escape. You picked C. <laughs> You're ready to pump your fist. No, I'm just I'm scared. <laughs> I'm holding my fingers. The correct answer is C. Oh, you have gosh. 30 minutes to escape. And you can choose to save or kill the animals at the end of that game. Oh, my gosh. So, Johnny, that's another point for you. Garrett, that is an incorrect answer. Score is... Four to three. Johnny, you are up. Question number five. Which of these items is not a power-up in the game? Is it A, ice beam, B, x-ray scope, C, hyper beam, D, the speed booster, or E, all of these are power-ups in the Super Metroid? Is it X-ray scope? Yeah, I'll run them off again. Which of these items is not a power-up in Super Metroid? A, ice beam. B, X-ray scope. C, hyper beam. D, speed booster. 
or E, they are all power-ups in the game. I have Garrett's answer. <laughs> I have Johnny's scared answer. <laughs> Both of you <laughs> have picked B. The x-ray scope is not a power-up. The correct answer is E. They are all power-ups in the game. Crap. So there's a point in the game where you actually get the x-ray scope, which allows you to see through hidden walls. Ah, uh, hmm. okay. Okay. So it's kind of a trickery question. Wait, there's a hyper beam? <laughs> yes. It's the beam you get to defeat the final boss. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, you only get that during that fight. Gotcha. All right. So both of you are incorrect. Score is still four to three. Johnny, you are up a points. Fun fact number two. In Super Smash Brothers Melee for the Nintendo GameCube, of course, we all know you earn trophies for iconic characters, weapons, items, and things like that. There is a Metroid alien trophy. If you look in the reflection of that trophy, you can see the Super Metroid title screen. That's cool. Ooh, it's, neat. It, yeah, it's, it's kind of hidden there, but people have looked a little too closely at their gaming screen to see that. All right, so it's time for the bonus question. You gentlemen know how it works. You have to place your bets, answer the final question correctly. You will win that many points. If you bet wrong, or I'm sorry, if you guess wrong, you will lose that many points. Please give me your bets. Johnny, you have four points to bet. Garrett, you have three points to bet. Garrett, I have your bet. Johnny, I have your bet. The bonus question. What movie is the Metroid franchise based off of? So you can give me movie or movie franchise. But what movie or franchise is the Metroid series as a whole based off of? I have Garrett's answer. I have Johnny's answer. I think he knows. <laughs> you both spent some time thinking about it. Garrett, you said that Metroid is based on the Aliens franchise. Johnny, you said that Metroid is based on the Star Wars franchise. The correct answer is it's based on the Aliens franchise. I was going to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I was thinking that too. Garrett is super excited on that one. He probably bet all his points. Well, let's kind of move into that. The points. Johnny, you had four points. Garrett, you had three. Garrett, you had bet three points, putting you at a total of six. Johnny, you had bet one point. So you had lost one point. So you go down to three. Garrett, you are the winner of this week's trivia. I was going to bet low, too. So yeah. I see a trend here. Johnny, you've taken up my steed and bet, <laughs> bet low points. But Gary likes to go all out and bet all of his points. I'm either going to win or I'm going to lose. Yeah. Hmm. So the first Metroid game, they took a lot of stuff from Aliens. You have a female protagonist in Ridley. The <laughs> One of the alien bosses is actually named after Ridley Scott, you know, the director oh. of Aliens. So that's where uh, Ridley comes from as the, you know, the main yeah. dragon enemy in that game. Huh. Uh, the Metroids, as well as the Aliens come out of a shell or an egg or they hatch and then they latch onto the face of their prey. So like, like little, face little huggers, you know, they both leave a starship or a planet that's about to explode to destroy the aliens. So there's, there's a lot of tropes that come from the alien franchise and they actually took something from each alien movie. So the first one went to Metroid. The second alien movie went towards Metroid two. Uh, the third one went towards super Metroid and the fourth one went towards I think Metroid Prime. I still would have lost, but I shouldn't have doubted myself. I, I was thinking Aliens, too. I'm like, ah, that seems too on the nose. But. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, ah, that seems real close. Johnny's, Johnny's going to bet that, too. But you guys I, did I good. I almost did. You did real good. 
Yeah. I, you had Garrett really run, like, scared, yeah. running scared. Man. Like I, I was going to pick E for that last question, too. I don't know why I didn't. But like I said, I, I, I like your trivia now. Like, it's it's doable. Because I always, I always <laughs> feel like E is is always put in there as the answer. Because, like, you wouldn't make an E if it wasn't the answer. That's, that's, what, that's what most of these trivias show, come a, up as. It's a mind game, though. It's like, are you going to pick E by default because it's you the think? only E question? Or yeah. do I switch yeah. it up a little bit? Yep. But all right. Well, congratulations, Garrett. Thank I think I, that's one of the ones I can say I think you earned. Thank like, you. when I lose, I'm like, well, it's just because this happened. Or, like, I got one question right. So you earned that. You Thank did you. well. Thank Good you. job. I actually kind of want to lose because I want to do trivia next week. Uh, well, you can <laughs> Based on what you answer. said, no. Garrett does hard trivia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our gamer trivia for this week. If you have some thoughts for a theme for next week, feel free to email us at Super Co-op Squad and let us know what your possible email or what, let us know what your possible themes would be, or give us a list of questions and we'll use them on air next week. Hey, squad mates! Just want to take the time and say thanks for listening to our show. It would be a big help if you could leave a review for us wherever you get your podcasts. The more reviews we get, the easier it is for people to find us. Thanks for listening. Now back to the show. We're going to edit this out. So the second question was quite literally a throwaway question. Because Les- you know what Lassie is, right? What Lassie is from? No. Lassie is from Final Fantasy Thirteen. I never played that much of Thirteen. That was the, the sign that they had that got embroidered on oh, there. That's okay. from the Lassie. That's what they were called. Klingon is from Star Trek. Yeah, when I heard that, I'm like, why are you what just is throwing it? What, this was, what was A? Because it was B, right? Metroid. I said, was yeah. Oh, so you race? only gave one correct. I knew two of them were like, okay, I know it's not Metroid. I knew it's not yeah. like the other thing. But. Yeah, Klingon is from Star Trek. So I was looking through the trivia and I was like, I know Johnny probably doesn't know a lot of Metroid, but I still wanted to make it where I felt it was even where you, like, you should probably know, like, there are three it's different color doors. Klingon. Yeah. And you should know. Freaking, uh, a couple she's of orange, things. so there wouldn't be an orange door. It worked. <laughs> That's so funny. So. But no, I, I, I was like, I'm gonna just do a fun question because I could have put Chuzu, Chozo, Choco. <laughs> yeah, Game I don't Boy, like those. Like Game Boy it, Light. Yeah, Game yeah. Boy yeah. Light. Those are fun. Like Game Boy that, Bright. Yeah, because it's kind of like randomized, whereas all the syllables mesh together. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I'm just gonna make a fun question. And I was like, someone's gonna laugh at me. Yeah. And then I got the direct opposite response because Garrett was just like. I can't believe you like gave See, this. I I yeah, was, was so stumped, but I, those are those. That's good. I like those. I was hoping that you would have picked like Klingon. I would have laughed. Come on, ass bro. That would have been bad. That, for me, it would have been hilarious. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so we're gonna head into our opinion piece. So, video game saturation. How many good games is too many good games in a year? So it's no secret that as uh, as gamers, we all have the issue of simply not having enough time to play all the titles that release that we enjoy or want to play uh, each year, and we skip games that we think are going to be good that we'd love to play. It feels like every year there are more and more titles that release and less and less time that we have to play the ones that we choose and the ones that we think are going to be good. Uh, with more than uh, 600 games releasing between Xbox One, Sony, and Nintendo consoles every year, uh, including their digital stores. Um, this is a staggering amount of games for you to choose from and, you know, first of all, sift through to find good games, uh, but then even have time to play that that small percentage that you feel is going to be good. And that's not, of course, including mobile and PC exclusive titles because that well, would be... Because they can't have good games. Mm, that would... No. Conan? Do you play Conan? Conan's an amazing game. Conan, Age of Conan, yes. the MMO? Yes, no. quite fun. Um, but that will put this number of 600 over 1,200 games a year and higher. Uh, so the question here is, are there truly too many good games releasing each year, or, or just games in general as well? And do publishers and developers stand to do better with the games released by spacing out these AAA uh, good releases a little bit a, bit, a little bit spaced out more? Uh, or are we as responsible adults simply too busy no matter what? So where, where do we sit? Okay, this is, uh, I would say, um, it, it's, a lot of it is we're too busy, you know, going to jobs, taking care of kids, you know, being responsible adults to have the time to play all these great games. Um, a lot of people would argue, oh, I'll just pick one when I finish it, then I'll go back to the other one, you know, or I'll go, I'll go play the other game I was playing at that time. Uh, but by the time you're done with that game, another good game comes out. You know, the, the way the spacing is going. Uh, for instance, um, just to bring up an example, I was all in Horizon. Horizon's a great game. Then Kingdom Hearts compilation came out. And 
I want to play that more. So I, I got stuck with that. I can't hold on to Joshua's Horizon the whole time. So I give I give him back his Horizon, and now I'm I'm out a Horizon experience. Hmm. You have anything? Yeah. So for me to dive into that question, yes, it's great that a lot of these games are like great are coming out. Is it too much for us? Yes, because there's no way that we're gonna catch up and play all these games. As Garrett says, we have adult life responsibilities. But for me, to have so many good games to come out, good quality games, Horizon, Injustice, uh, Resident Evil 7, Zelda, anything else, I think it's awesome because it means the industry is still going to be healthy and there's going to be so much that you can choose from that with that much variety, it only hurts because you can't play them all, but it helps you because you have so much you can pick from. And... For all these games to come out, by the time you reach that second or third game, that game you wanted the first time around, it's probably going to be dropped in price. Like for me, one thing that I, my brother always tags me for is I'll buy three or four games that come out in a month and I won't open that second game till like four or five months down the line. Because as Gary, you pointed out, there's another good game that came out that following month and I paid $60 retail for four games. And now I could have bought all four games for $60 at that point in time. So. I think it only hurts because you just don't have or we don't have the time to play them. Yeah, you know what? Okay, so I my answer my answer is no. I don't think that there are too many games releasing and I don't think there are too many good games releasing. But you look at it in two different ways. You look at it on the column of if there are too many game, good games releasing, what I'm sorry, if you look at it from the standpoint of I can't play all my games because there's so many releasing, what are your constraints? Money and time. Even as a kid, you know, when you when you could play a game all the way through because you just had school, and let's be honest, a lot of us half-assed our way through that. So you know, you, you <laughs> don't put, speak for me, John. You didn't put the time in that you probably should have. Half of you know, half the gamers in the world, maybe more. It's a joke. I, you know, we, I'm just kidding. But my point is that <laughs> even even if you did put in work, you had ample time, so you could play your games to your heart's content. You can read about games, trade games with friends, but your constraint was money. So you you could blow through a game, but you couldn't buy every game. So it didn't matter that there was 25 games coming out because the one game you could play, you invested so heavily in it that it was fine. Now it's the flip side to where you have the money most of the time to buy whatever games you want, usually when you want to. You don't have the time. So I, I see I can see from that standpoint, yes, there are too many games releasing. The the counter to that though is that's been like that for every media. You know, if you look at books. TV shows, movies. You can't watch every movie. Yeah. There's over 400 movies that release every year. Can't watch them all. TV shows, books, comics. It's, it's impossible to absorb all of any media. And I think that, Joshua, to your point, it's healthy for the industry to have a large, in any industry for consumers, a large amount of options. If you start having only a few options, that's when you get crap. Because if you only have 25 games that release a year or even 100, sure, you could probably play the best games. But because there's no competition, the best games don't have to be truly like the cream of the crop because their competitors are not the cream. So that's how I feel on the one side. Um, on the other side, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> so you, I want to kind of uh, call back to you saying it's the same in, in other medias, you know, TV shows, books, movies, all that stuff. Uh, I would disagree. You put in a lot more time playing a game than watching uh, a movie or even a TV show. I doubt many people are going to watch 40 TV shows. You know, you're going to pick two or three. You know, you might watch, uh, you know, uh, up to up to six and, and drop out of the other ones because either they just didn't interest you as much as the other shows or, yeah, you run out of time. But, like, say movies or something like that. You can watch a movie a day and, and be done with it. Yes, you're Games right. You, you have to invest time into. You, yes, you're right. You're, you can, you can, for an individual movie, yes, there's less time invested. But when there's 400 movies releasing, you, you, you literally don't have enough time in, in a year. That's what, 400 movies? Let's say there are two hours each. That's 800 movie hours. That's a lot of hours for watching a movie. Do you think 400 movies come out a year? Yes, it's just, that's not, it's a fact. Like, that's how many movies come Oof, out a year. I don't, I don't, I don't see that. But okay, it, it's true. I mean, I'm not, I'm, talking, I'm not saying it's not. But, on the indies. Yeah, I'm not just oh, talking okay, the, theatrical. Although there's hundreds that are released for theatrical, but then also straight to DVD movies like the the animated film for DC yeah, yeah. or other straight to yeah. DVDs. Then of course you have indie films like Moonlight last year won Academy Award. It didn't come out in theaters per se, really, but 
it was a, it's a triple A movie for sure, no matter how you splice yeah, it. But not not everyone cares to watch every single thing that comes out. You know, games are are different because it invests so much time. You don't have to go up to a, a scale of four hundred. You can go to twenty twenty five. Uh, you know, good games a year. Uh, that are that are spaced out this way. That are spaced out. We're right after I finish one. Okay, now three more came out. It's it's different in my opinion. I I don't think so. I think I think yes, you can watch more movies, but you couldn't watch all the movies. If you know, just like uh, my my point is that you as a gamer might care more about all the games, but there's going to be a movie lover who wants to watch all the movies, yeah. and they simply cannot do it. So yes, you're right. You might not care about all the 400 movies, but there are people who are like, man, I want to watch this and this yeah. and this and this. Okay. And you just can't. Fair and enough. then also goes in line with not only their time, but their money, because it still costs yeah. money to watch those movies unless you're stealing them, which I wouldn't advocate. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you know, that that's the same situation. I think other other consumers for other entertainment types are gonna find themselves in. Maybe not to the same degree, because you're right, the, the time investment for a game is a lot bigger than a movie, but still. It's a it's a constraint that, that they're gonna have. Yeah. Okay. Um did you have any any counter to the other the other part of that? No, uh, the other part being that when when we're younger we have the time but not the money. And exactly. when we're older we have the money but not the time. Right. Um You know, I had something earlier when you were mentioning it. It's it's lost to me now. It'll okay. probably come back. No worries. Um and then And then the second part of that is it's it's arbitrary for for someone to say, well, this is a good game and that's not, because that's going to be up to an individual's opinion. Yes. So as a publisher or as a developer, you need to put out more games than less because you don't know for sure what niche your titles are going to fall into and who's going to absorb your game. So if I put out five titles a year and let's say one's a shooter, one's a racer, one's a fighter, whatever, I've got a better chance of putting out five or six games, a couple different genres, than just putting out one game and hoping for sure. the best. And that also is a problem that a developer and a publisher can find themselves in if they have less titles. Yeah. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And not only that, it really branches out to the audience. If you have an audience that's big into, like, you take, you know, Japan, for example, or that whole, you know, Eastern countries, they're really big on, like, JRPGs, maybe not as much into sports. Right. Here in America, we're all big about sports versus something like FIFA is like a worldwide thing. Yeah. So to your point, you do have to branch out to different types of games for different audiences. Under the same kind of mindset, it's good to have that content because depending on each individual, the content that they appreciate also takes X amount of time. If I'm big into JRPGs, a game could take me 40, 50, 60, 70 hours to complete versus if you're into a sports game, you're going to play it until you're just you're bored with it versus if you're playing a shooter, average shooter, that campaign can last you four to 12 hours, depending on the game. So my 80 hours com in my one title could be your 80 hours in 12 different shooters. Like all that time invested is based on how we play games and how we invest our time. So are you agreeing that there's not too many games releasing every year? Good games or are there are too few good games? There are, or, or just enough. Is is it fine for how they come out whenever they come out? There are a lot or too many good games, but that is not a bad thing. I agree. I, th I think there are. I don't want to say there's too many, but there are a, there are more good games than you can play in in a year's time of their releasing. But I agree, it's not a bad thing. I don't no, think it's, it's too many though. Um, and then you know, here's why. Another another aspect to this. So we look at AAA titles, right? Like Red Dead. We, I mean, we just automatically assume, right? Like Red Dead Two probably going to be a good game. Duh. Uh, I mean, <laughs> but, but here's my point, right? Injustice Two. I mean, you haven't played it, but you automatically assume it's a good game based yes. upon its yeah. name. Um, I felt that way for Mass Effect uh, Andromeda, although that hurt a little bit. So <laughs> we've got these established things that we assume are going to be good, and not oftentimes, but sometimes we can waste our time and resources buying that game thinking it's going to be good on preconceived notions before we know anything or play it because of its name. And that's a waste of our time and money there. Um, but you look at games like Minecraft, Super Meat Boy, Castle Crashers, Alien Hominid, made by these small little developers with games that don't look terribly great, all things considered, if you compare them to AAA like, develop, developed titles. And these were great games. And they're made by smaller guys. But just as equally... You could have crap games come out from these same companies, and you're like, God, why would you even make that? That game sucked. That game was stupid. 
So, I mean, you never, I mean, as, as a creator, you may not know which one is going to be like, this is freaking gold, Minecraft, a billion dollar industry, and this one, Terraria, is barely scraping the, the barrel, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, where, where, do you, where do you draw the line as far as like, this is gold and this is not if you don't try? True, but it's all word of mouth. So, that's a good point. We have people that will write reviews, whether biased or not, and a lot of us go based on those reviews. Mass Effect Andromeda got oh. terrible reviews. It deserved it. So it, well, that's one of two things I was going to say. Either it deserves it or it's skewed based on the writer. So you can take a game like, for me, it was Sonic Generations. There are some decent reviews and there were some really bad reviews, but I thought it was an incredibly awesome experience. 2D Sonic, 3D Sonic, and pretty much remaking the soundtracks and the level designs all from the history of Sonic. I thought that was awesome. And Sonic Forces, I hope, leans a little bit towards that, but in a whole new <laughs> we'll, direction. We'll see. <laughs> so when you take that into accommodation and just, you know, Minecraft, I remember reading an article in a review for Minecraft. It got near perfect scores, but I was like, who's going to play a pixelated, like, build it yourself creator type of game? I was like, I don't know who's going to, they got Zelda hearts in it. I don't think anyone's going to play. You got a pickaxe? Who's going to play this game? And then right. it just blew up. Right. Literally so, out of nowhere. So let me ask you this, Garrett. Cause I think I think you're opposed to us where you you feel that there are too many good games coming out. And I think you mean like triple A, like these are like high quality produced games? High, n- not necessarily high quality, because you can still have a bad high quality produced game. Yeah, I mean true. I mean, I guess from my personal opinion, too many games that I want to play and do not and don't have the time to play them. Okay. So how would a developer or publisher or, or both go about kind of Fixing that issue. If, if you can think of ways to fix the issue that you're in now where there are too many games for you to play that you want to play or that you feel will be something that you're interested in, but you just don't have time or money. Uh, in a perfect world, if it was up to Garrett, when I'm done <laughs> with one game, the next developer can then release their next game. Developers and publishers don't work that way. True. They release games when they feel the time is right and when their games are ready or, in some cases, EA, uh, when they're not ready. Yeah. No. Oh, God. Very true. <laughs> so even though I don't agree with you, I, I thought of a few points as to things that developers and publishers can do to make it so that... Well, okay, let me just preface this real quick where it, it's a thing where no, no matter how many games you might want to play, you don't have the time, and there are tons of good games coming out, so you just they just get left behind or there are tons of good games that don't get the money they deserve and they don't they get canceled because they're going to begin some other big game there are a couple ways that i feel developers and publishers can alleviate this issue for themselves where their their big games get just you know left by the wayside because they didn't get played even though they were great and then for gamers as well because you don't have time first thing release games yearly yearly. stop waiting till september october november right there i think it would make it very easy for a for gamers to play more of the games they want to if they release them throughout the entire calendar year. Stop waiting for a three-month period to release half the games that come out every year. Do you think a game will make just as much money being released earlier in the year rather than that holiday period? Um, Especially when like a new console is coming out? So you know what? I think that right now in this industry of what we have for the gaming industry is it may not because the trend is, oh, as for parents and even even casual gamers that Oh, well, the best games come out September, October, November, because everyone does that. But if people begin to buck that trend and put out great games in March and April and February and whenever, you know, Overwatch or Grand Theft Auto back in the day earlier in the year, and they start just putting it out when they feel like they have an opportunity to do so, you might buck that trend. Yes, you might take some hits doing being the the pioneer to do it, but you can change that perception, I I feel. I mean, yes, it, it would suck at first, but look at look last year's Overwatch. I mean, it barely cracked the top 10 uh, as the top 10 selling games for 2016, but it was still in there. And that released in like May or June or something. Yeah. Well, sorry. Let no, me ask fine. you. Do you think Overwatch would have sold a lot more had it came out in October? I think so. Yes, absolutely. So based on what you're talking about, why would an industry try to buck a trend when it knows or can foresee that it's almost guaranteed to make more money in October? Right now. But But if you look right now. There's a lot of games that come out March, April, May, June that just they never do well because people go, ah, well, why'd they put it out in March? If it came out in March, it probably wasn't a good title. So if you start putting out your biggest things year round, you will start to have people forget that. And I think putting games like Overwatch, putting games like Injustice, I mean, Mass Effect 
it just did bad. But had it been a great game, it would have been one that I could use as an, as an example for games that come out outside of that holiday period and people begin to change their minds. Yes, but I don't think it's enough of a trendsetter to change the perception of like we buy the game because we want to buy the game. We don't buy the game just because it's October. But how many casual people do that? A lot. No, I yeah. I don't think they buy the game because it's that type of season. I think they buy the game because the hype is built around that game and that game is built around Black Friday and holiday. Yeah. You can you can still do that with your game coming out in March. You can, but I don't think Call of Duty is going to sell as well if they throw it out in March well, just because it's not a holiday quote unquote holiday season. Yeah, okay, so I wouldn't expect the big hitters Call of Duty and Battlefield to move their their launch dates, but other titles def I feel definitely should and could. Yes, and I I agree with that, but I don't think it's going to be enough where AAA titles are going to most AAA titles are going to move that. Horizon, perfect example. They're should awesome. should have came out different time of the year. Absolutely. Then February? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Okay, you're right. It did come out. Remember, February. it was supposed to come out during the holiday. It got yeah. pushed. Then then let me reverse that. It's good it came out in February. Yeah, I think it only benefited them to have that game pushed back till February. Right, and more games should do that. I'm not saying the big guy. I'm not saying Titanfall and Battlefield and FIFA and NBA. Well, Titanfall did come out. I know those guys stay where you're at because you're already the top guys in that month bracket. But guys like Horizon and maybe Tomb Raider and Overwatch and Injustice and and The Witcher and Dead Space and all those games come out come out January, come out February, come out March, and then you can play those games. Because what were you playing in January? Bunch of nothing. I mean, new, new. Bunch of nothing. Bunch of nothing. What were you playing in February? Overwatch. Bunch of nothing Horizon. new. Yeah, so you're not playing new game because nothing is coming out. Yeah. And I, I see what you're saying, Joshua. You are correct that these companies will not do it because they, they stand to make more money on the, oh, I got to buy somebody a gift, let me get this brand new game thing. You're right. They'll make more money that way. But I feel in the long run, if they can change that trend, and you're right, it may not happen, maybe very difficult. But if they did, A, they'd make more money because people would be inclined to buy good games year round. And then B, gamers could play more games without having to wait all the time. Yeah. Uh, One thing I want to bring up, because Gary, you had mentioned this in an episode previously uh, in the last uh, month or so, that for the people that I just literally lost my thought. Like like amidst talk? Yes. I was thinking, (laughs) I was like, don't forget it. And then I forgot it. Give me a second. It's going to come back. Talking about games, talking about mid cycles, just talking about holidays, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it happened. It was a good one too. Overwatch? No. Damn. It was about. It wasn't about money spending. Oh, okay. So, Garrett, one thing I want to bring up that you had mentioned in a previous episode uh, in the last month or so is it doesn't always come down to. You know, if they want to move it, it comes down to timing and development cycles. So yes. if the company has a game and it's scheduled to come out this day, but they have to push it back because of budgeting or money or they need more time, does that impact that release date? Sure. But now we're talking about, okay, we delayed it six months. If we want to put it in the next year, do we want to delay it another three months, another five months? Well, are we going to make more money? Or are we going to lose more money? That's doing that? that's more of an issue of good or bad project managers. That's necessarily not necessarily their ideas for when they want to put the game out. A game getting pushed back or delayed because of complications that is project management, and that's their that's its own problem. That's I don't think that's the same thing. But it's not always project management because say you you're Call of Duty and you're about to drop this World War II trailer, and all of a sudden Battlefield drops a trailer. Maybe you strateg- strategically move around it based on hype. Ooh, I disagree. On. You should not change anything for your game or your product based upon someone else's product. But people do. No, I, do. I I would disagree with that cuz say if Battlefield 1 did announce uh say if Battlefield announced Battlefield 1 recently and then a week later Call of Duty is like, "Oh, we got World War 2." You know that to me that looks bad. And, I, and stand, I mentioned this in previous episodes. Stand by your product. I Good know th- product rises to the top. That's I know that's your firm believer of that, but it's about strategy and marketing. Is it smarter to wait until all that energy dissipates and then you release, hey, we are also doing a world war? Or do you well, do it immediately? That like, does, no, no, no. That doesn't change their release date, though. That's all I'm talking about, release it, dates. People have, they have, developers have changed release dates based around competition. Yes. I think that's poor decision. That's, that's a whole different conversation, but I think that's poor decision making. Um, we're kind of strained a little bit. My my point is that I think that 
there are ways to make it so that you get games. You you can alleviate the fact that games year round, or sorry, um, you can alleviate the fact that you can't play all the good games. And my first point was the life cycle. Uh, yeah, cycle. W- the calendar. Uh, the second point is make make your games shorter. You know, there's. Mm, if, I disagree with that. If you if you have an eighty five hour grind, let me play eighty five hours. I want a long game. We have already people. You maybe complaining about buying a sixty dollar game and then you're done with it in six hours. Is it worth your time? Probably not. So why would you make a like when Arkham, uh, which Batman game was like done in like six hours? Origins. Yeah. So you buy a sixty dollar game you're hyped <laughs> up for, and then six hours in, the game is literally over. Are you gonna replay it for content? Like maybe there's not enough content to go through. Why are you going to make it shorter? What there was a game that came out that was like four hours. I don't remember what it was. Legend of Zelda. No, it was uh, <laughs> it was Force Unleashed. They spent so much time into that. Came out for sixty bucks. Four hours in, you're done. What else are you going to do? Look for all the holocrons. Okay. Like there's no way you're going to make a game shorter just to try to improve like how many games you punch out in a year. What I mean by shorter is get rid of filler, like get rid of things that aren't necessary to the the immediate completion and 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 beating of the game. I'm not saying side quests and stuff, but just like editing a movie, you can edit down things. You're editing a show, you can edit out things to make it a more streamlined yeah, game. I'm actually absolutely sure they do that. I'm sure they they look at side quests like eh, maybe we can do without that one. That doesn't really make sense for the story. Or eh, sure doing that, but then what do you do about this? You know, so I'm more than certain that they do that, but. To like the way that you're making it sound is like cut a game short, not cut a game short, but cut it so that the game can be completed in in a more reasonable amount of time at, for for people who have constraints. Do you know how? Do you have an, an example of reasonable time? <laughs> I, I don't know how this would be completed because that that's again that's something that's different for every single person. Um, but I feel like okay. that would help quite a bit. Um, no man's sky. Yeah. Uh. So, but to 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 round this out, you know, let's start with you, Garrett. What's your opinion on this? And where do you think is the, the the average for how many games can you even play before you start to lose that battle of I can't keep up anymore? And then lastly, you know, how many AAA great titles do you want to release each year? Um, all right, tough question for me. I'm not much of a planner here. I don't so you know, first <clears throat> thing, state what what's your opinion okay. on the matter? My opinion: there are too many good games coming out. Um, I I, I, I don't want to say coming out in the year i want to say coming out relatively close close to each other that's my that's my complaint and i think that's a bad thing i think you miss out on a lot of stuff i think you you tarnish the experience that you can have with that game just because another game came out that maybe you're more looking forward to or just that's the hype i mean not only do we have you know hype to worry about the social media and stuff like oh i I gotta play this game before it gets spoiled for me right same thing with movies okay Um, and then, you know, how many games do you think you can or should be playing on average to not lose that battle in a year? Let's see. I I, I couldn't say, um, again, it it depends on games. You know, Overwatch doesn't really have like a a time. It's, it's one of those ones you can always just pick up and play again. Well, what do you think as far as like a beatable game? So do you think if you beat 15 games a year, is that? average 10 7 like how many games do you think okay if 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 i could play this if only this many games came out on average i, I could keep up uh, okay okay let's see 20 games 25 no i think that's a bit much for me 10? just because just of my time um or, or as well i want to do maybe maybe 12 games okay i feel 12, 12 is probably a, a, a comfortable amount okay so i'm the the, the last question is how many triple a titles a game a month how many triple a titles do you expect to release every year like big supposedly good or great games how many do you want to do you want to come every year how many do you you kind of expect or look at i expect mm, 30 40 no <clears throat> okay i expect maybe 25 to 30 triple a games okay uh coming out of the year what do you want 12 you want one a year i want one a month a one a month that's that's rough for that, all that's, these people making games is, it, it is but we're asking me. We're not asking them. Right. Okay. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Josh, what about you? How, no, how, what's your opinion jealous. on this matter? Too many games, good game, too many bad game. How do, how do you feel? It's not too many. Uh, to answer your, your other follow-up question, uh, I think at least 35, 40. Oh, it's the first, first thing. Cause it's okay. a list here. So first, first thing, one or two sentences. What's your opinion? No. Oh, so no, there's not too many games in a year. 
I think it's I think it's great. I mean, you can have a game that comes out in March and then a game comes out in April and you don't have time to play it. It wouldn't make a difference if that game came out in June or July. Eventually, you're going to get to it. The only problem is if there's so many games coming out, you just have to make a choice. And that's the hardest part. You have to make a choice. We won't get into it, but I think just really quick, Garrett and I both disagree. Once once a game's passed like that threshold, yeah. I, but, I, I but for you, that's agree. different. I know. I know you'll go back. I, like I won't go saying, back. That's like Garrett, you saying that I'm not going to play Zelda because I got a Switch in December. Okay, that, I, I see your point there. Um, second, or is third, that like me saying that? Well, because you're playing, because you'll be playing past it way late. the threshold, and you're playing it way after the hype. Oh uh, yeah. So okay. third thing there. Uh, then how many? I'm sorry. Second thing. Uh, so second thing. How many? On average, how many games do you expect an average gamer to play before they start losing that battle of not being able to keep up on a year yearly basis? Twenty four. Twenty four games a year. To a month. Okay. Uh, so then how many AAA titles do you expect to come out every every year? And how many do you want? 50 plus. And how many do you want? All of them. As much as they can bring. <laughs> yes. Okay, because, again, it brings diversity. And for me, as a gamer, it allows me to pick and choose. And not only that, games drop in price relatively quickly now. So if there's a $60 game that I want to buy right now, but I'm not going to play for three months, that's going to turn into a 40 or $50 game okay. more likely. Okay. Only benefits me. So, wow, that's high. So, yeah, Garrett, you're probably the median. You're way up in the highs there. I'm, I'm below both of you. Guys. So, so first of all, I feel m- more like you, Joshua, that whatever amount of games needs to come out or want to come out for the industry to to do well and have diversity, like you stated, and competitiveness, then that's what comes out. Um, I don't, I don't, I it, it does, it is hard. It is, I, I won't deny Garrett that. I can't play all the games I want to play. Nobody can. Even even people who professionally it is their job to review games, they cannot play every game they want to. It just it's part of it. This is the world we live in. Um, on average, how many games people does a gamer need to play? I think eight or nine is an average. That's a lot for me. A year, a year? A, a, to completely beat in a year. Yeah, like not 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 a fighter, not Overwatch. I'm talking like. The Zeldas, the Mass Effects, yeah, the Witcher, you're, the you're Horizons. About less than one per month. Less than one per month. Because most people, I don't say most, a large amount of people have two jobs or a spouse to live with and, and or, or or children, multiple children. Dang, that puts a strain on your ability to do these things. So, I mean, that's how I feel on this one. Um, how many great AAA titles should come out a year and how many should I expect? Like you, Joshua, as many as possible. Put out great things and cream rise to the top and whatever I can catch. I can catch. So, um, uh, so I disagree with that. I, mean, I, <laughs> I find that a problem. Uh, yeah, we're, I don't think we're going to agree on this, but we've stated our opinions, what we expect, and uh, some options for what we would do uh, to fix it. Um, and, you know, email us, let us know what your thoughts are on the matter, how many games should come out, how do you feel about the, the release schedule that we see. Uh, email us at supercoopsquad at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at supercoopsquad. So you're going to have to edit out that part in the beginning where you said this is going to be an hour and a half show. Are we going over? We'll we're be... almost at two hours. No, we're, 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 we're not at... even done with speed run. And that's a guaranteed 10 minutes. We're at an hour 32 right now. But we'll cut it down. To probably, we're at like probably an hour 25 at this moment. Um, all right, speed run. So last segment of the podcast. <laughs> last segment of the podcast, speed run. Each week, uh, we'll break down 10 news stories and fun facts. I just didn't quite make the list for a full segment. We've got one minute per topic before we move on to the next, finished or not. we got to go fast. Unless you're going to get left behind. In the speed run. Spotlight kind of to the far. Okay. Here we go. So M. Night Shyamalamalamalam confirms a sequel <laughs> to the 2000 hit movie, Unbreakable. Unbreakable! Uh, and and uh, it's called Glass. Uh, Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson will be returning to the film. Huh. I feel like this is only happening because the last movie, Split, Split. did very, very well. well yeah, it's ironic that that was a tie-in to Unbreakable. Yeah, so at the somehow. end of the movie, Bruce Willis appears in uh, Split, and you see him like having coffee, and it's like a surprise. That is the twist of Split, is that this takes place in the entire world of Unbreakable. Oh, okay. um, that's that's that is the twist. That's weird. Yeah, kind of weird. It wasn't a, the greatest twist. He's, I haven't seen. Split. He's getting worse. It was a fun movie. Had some problems, but yeah, uh, I still think his greatest twist was taking Avatar: The Last Airbender, this great show, and turning it into that movie. That was pretty. Pe- pretty what terrible. a twist! Yeah, Sixth Sense is my my go to. 
Sixth the, Sense was a great. The Village was twist. good too, though. I haven't seen it. Ooh. I haven't seen it. Ooh. I've only seen Unbreakable. You're missing out on the greatest of Shimalama. I really liked Unbreakable. So quick, actually, are you gonna go see Glass? Nope. I'd like to see Split first. Yeah. I'm... You mean Unbreakable? Next. The Harry Potter and the Cursed Child stage play is heading to New York City on April 22nd, 2018 at the Lyric Theater. No price set yet for the U.S. debut of this stage play. So, Johnny, have you uh, put in that PTO request yet to go see this? I can't afford a ticket, man. It's probably going to be like 180 to 250 bucks for the cheap seats, bro. Plus, you got to find a way to New York City. <laughs> I mean, I can just... Uber. Yeah, ooh, God, you know how expensive that'd be? Uber plane. I, I would be really interested to watch this. I would actually like it. I I, I read the uh, like the script or whatever the stage play, which is pretty much a book, but it was it was fun to read and, and I liked it a lot. It gave you like that kind of epilogue feeling like the, after you read the seventh Harry Potter book, you're like, man, I don't know what happens. They see you get a, you get a snapshot of older Harry and Hermione as like adults with their own kids, and you, now you see it. Which was cool. And I also like the fact that they made Harry like a real person. He wasn't like perfect. He had a problem with his kids and like wasn't like the greatest father to some of them. So I would like to see it on stage. No. Yeah. Harry, Harry Potter. I don't care for Harry Potter. Oh, man. Sorry, same, Sorry same, buddy. Same, same I'd love to see how this how this works on stage. It'd be fun. Pottermore. Yeah. Or are they, what do they call it? What are the, what are the fa- Next. Mm-hmm. The Aquaman movie has started production and is slated for a release in 2018. I'm just, just read it. Yep. The Aquaman movie has started production and is slated to release December 21st, 2018. An official new symbol for Aquaman has been released as well, which kind of looks like a a widened Star Trek emblem. I don't care. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was going to say I haven't seen it, but now that you mentioned that, (laughs) yeah. What do you mean? I mean, it it just started production. I just feel like... Well, they had to find a, a screenwriter and they were bouncing around and stuff. Okay, but you know what's weird is like okay, they they've already had Jason Momoa like put on the costume and do all these like pictures and stuff. Justice League, bro. I know, but it just yeah. feels weird that his actual movie isn't coming out till twenty. That's how DC's doing it. I mean, we we know they're doing it backwards. That's a year and a half. We've I mean, already known this. It's yeah. not going to come out any sooner. So that seems like a, a right amount of time to make a movie. Have the big movie first, then explain who your characters are. <laughs> Yeah, they'll probably Your take the same so flashback. They'll take flashback scenes in Justice League, and then they'll just pop them in the movie. Remember yeah. that time Flash did that? And then, yeah, it was Peter Griffin all over the place. Mm. No, yeah. but I think Khal Drogo is going to be a great Aquaman. That <laughs> was not meant to be a joke. I really think he's going to be a great Aquaman. He really is. Next. Fire Emblem Echoes Shadow of Valentia for the 3DS DLC has been revealed. The DLC will cost you a whopping, get this, $45 but will be a 30% saving compared to buying the content individually. Uh, this will include new maps, dungeons, and more. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why has it got to be so much? Why has it got to be like that? Why has it got to be the price of the game? It's more, more than the game. The game's only going to be $40. Yeah, no, I think I think doesn't don't no. Do it. The a, game is forty bucks. It's a three DS oh. game. Thirty nine ninety nine. No, is it three DS forty nine ninety nine? No, they're no, thirty nine. Totally got a Pokemon game right now. They're thirty nine. Come on, dude. I don't know. Okay, Someone ripped fine. you off, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> GameStop. <laughs> so, so I was talking. Uh, I forget. I was talking about this. If it's gonna have, <laughs> which is probably not the same amount of content as the game version, then maybe it's justifiable. But yeah, I this don't better think so. this better have more content than the darn game. I, I don't Although know. to be fair, season passes never have more than the full game. They charge us fifty. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think they, they found a price point and they're like, okay, if you want all the content, here you are. I, don't, I feel like Nintendo's been doing okay when it comes to DLC. You know, Hyrule Warriors, Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart. Next! Rumors of a new Nintendo Ubisoft crossover game surface. A new Mario RPG with the Rabbids from Rayman form a new game with up to two-player co-op Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Is is that the actual title? That's what it's rumored. Yeah, the actual title of the game is Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. That is a terrible title. God, I don't care. Rabbids have not died off yet. They're no. just minions. They're making a comeback. No. What's funny is they weren't even they're not even their own thing. They don't even have like a game. I mean they have the games, but right, they came from Rayman. Yeah. I don't even remember them in Rayman. Not in the new ones. 
Rayman oh, okay, okay. Legend? No, they weren't in. They weren't in they those were before that, right? Yes, like old Rayman. Like, like Rayman, I think what on PS2? PS One, PS One. Yeah, Rayman I never the played Great them. Escape. Rayman 2? Yeah, something like Ape that. Ape Escape? But these guys haven't, like, been in an actual, like, game game, game ever. Like, they never Except had a game. Except for Rabbids. Yeah. No, that, I mean, when that Wii craze that happened. It's a fun game. Yeah. Have you played that game? It's a fun, it's a fun Wii waggle, like, party game. Yeah. I have played the game. It was not fun. I mean, this could be really good. This, If this is true and it's just a weird, wacky RPG adventure. I mean, it's rumored that they, the Rabbids are, like, you play Mario and Luigi and the Rabbids are costumes of Mario Next. characters. Fox will release a one-night noir version of the my turn, right? It's my turn. Didn't you just go? No, no I just read it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm going to skip that one so you can no, read just, it. Just say it. Okay. <laughs> Fox, will, <laughs> Fox will release a one-night noir version of the movie Logan titled Logan Noir. This will release on May 16th at 5 p.m. Pacific time at Alamo Draft House Theaters across the country. Well, this pretty much just means black and white. It's going to be a black and exactly white film. What it means. Yeah, I know. I'm just uh, if you don't know what a film noir. Yeah, is. I was just set, setting that out there. Okay. I I mean, cool. I, I guess don't feel it needs it. I mean, it's cool. Like for other for other movies, it made sense. What other movie did it somewhat recently? Another movie did this somewhat recently. Hmm, you're right. I don't know which one it was. I, I don't feel Logan has that same setting. I, I that think it, needs it would be noir. I think it'd be cool. I won't go watch it, but it's I mean, cool. It'd be like Sin City esque. I love Sin but, City. I like Sin City. But the difference is all the blood and gore, they're not going to be splashed with like w- like white Yellow. blood effects and <laughs> stuff like that. So Yellow I don't bastard. know how you can have a bloody movie in straight black and white because I don't know how that's going to... Pudding! <laughs> I don't know how that's really going to really showcase what we see if it was in color. I, I think this is going to be cool. I hope they make it on the DVD like or, or a Blu-ray version that, as an option. I'd really like that. Eh, possible. Um, I can see it, but... Next! NetherRealm Studios announces eight. NetherRealm Studios announces three of the new DLC characters for the upcoming Injustice 2 game. Starfire, Red Hood, and Sub-Zero. Okay. Man, am I excited. I'm the only one at this table that looks excited. That's fine. No, That's cool. I'm actually like Starfire looks real good. Starfire looks awesome. We have Red Hood, Jason Todd. If we can get Arsenal in this, do we know Red Hood Red and the Hood Outlaws. Is, that, is Red Hood only like Jason Todd? There's no other. Like, Unless it's the Joker. Yeah, the Joker was the original Red Hood or uh, supposedly the Joker. You don't yeah, know yeah, for yeah, sure. True, true. Yeah, but um, either way. So at the end of this trailer, they show off six more silhouettes in the background. Two people are very clearly like scene uh on one side there's black manta yep. no mistake the other side is raiden it's got that damn helmet so. raiden raiden it's, it's raiden. Raiden. raiden in that game and yeah. that raiden's got the hat so Cinequat. uh rumors are are going along that this is a red herring these two things i think so for for instance mortal kombat x uh they showed off uh they had a silhouette of baraka but when baraka was announced in the trailer a xenomorph pops out of his chest and, and that's their those, announcement those for a character with a Next! Head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, spoke to the future of the Fable franchise. When asked on Twitter if we will ever see a Fable 4, he replied, Nothing to announce right now, but I do think the IP has a lot of places it could go. Johnny, I know you're about to say something. Yeah, man, I was really excited for Fable Legends, (laughs) and you took it from me. I played it at E3 like two years back, freaking loved it, and then a game got canceled. It was pretty cool. Give me Fable Legends. Quit playing around with no. my emotions, man. No, nothing announced right now. And then also, you know what? Honestly, what's his name? Is it Peter Peter Moore? Peter yeah. Molyneux. P- there we go. Peter Molyneux. Peter Moore. Good God, Johnny. Uh, <laughs> Peter Molyneux, you've destroyed the thing you love. He left gaming. He, ret- he, he retired from gaming because he ruined he ruined Fable. He's, you're doing this. He he took a great game series and he just overhyped. He is the king of overhype. Yeah, he, remember Milo? Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he's sitting on someone's flash drive, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's door, where he's doing. Away. I I just just do something right with Fable. It's one of the best game series, and you just ruined it. They're gonna have to find a new developer. I don't know. I don't Lion, think, isn't I, Lionhead Studios done? That, uh, that's, what so. I, that's what I mean. Yeah. Who else is going to pick up the Fable franchise that will think, make it a good game? I think Microsoft. Next! The Fate of the... Yep. <laughs> the Fate of the Furious has now hit the $1 billion movie mark. Currently, the movie sits at the 21st all-time grossing spot right above Rogue One, a Star Wars story. All right, so here's the thing. The, <laughs> this list doesn't mean anything anymore. 
Nothing. You know why? Two reasons why. Real quick. First reason is that the movies that first did it did it without having to be worldwide box office film. They did it in just the U.S. Two, there is a crap ton of inflation. Yep. So yep. it's not fair to look at movies from 2004 who had to have people buy movie tickets compared to now. Stop it with this list. Look at the list for that accounts for inflation, and that's an accurate gauge. It's all just numbers. But these are not even; these are fake numbers. These are false numbers. Asterix. It's tricksy. False. No, they're legit. Don't be hobbits. They're legit numbers. No, they're terrible numbers. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> you got a list all of a sudden. The last ten minutes of the episode. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> yeah. It, I. I. I'm not. I'm not okay with these lists anymore. Just yeah. give us the 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 one that shows for inflation. That's what's up. Not that's fair. No. Uh, yeah. I got. I got nothing to argue that with. Other than. Other than that. Next. A rating leak in Korea suggests a Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 will release in the future. This will be a digital release consisting of Mega Man games 7, 8, 9, and 10. Good for you, Mega Man. You're finally getting your due diligence to getting your games out. Good for you, Joshua. Yay! <laughs> if they add all the cool extra bonus features, con- content, hard mode, if they do pixel perfect mode for, for these games, which is going to be, for 7 and 8, it's going to be really hard because those are not 8-bit games. Um, the nine and ten will be a cool rendition for that. Seven, seven, eight are in eight bit. No, seven came out on the Super Nintendo. Mega Man eight came out on ah, PS one. Just and wait, Dreamcast. Just oh. wait, Joshua. In in a year, maybe two, you're gonna get Mega Man Collection three. That's gonna have all games one through ten on one disc. So I last want, year, I just want the X Legacy Collection. Just put all the games on one disc. I don't see that happening anytime soon. They had it on PS two. They did. PS2, well, no one acknowledges they're ripping games. you guys off. No. 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 This is what Capcom does. Yeah. This it's is fine. what everybody does. Yeah. Just put a compilation and bam, let me take your money. You put three compilations out when you cut them into two, then put the two into one. And then you get people like Garrett. And. And you. Ah, end. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is our speed run for this week. If you've got topics that, you, that you're interested in that, cop, that pop up during the week, feel free to email us those topics. And we'll add them into the speed run. Every week, you can reach us at supercoopsquad at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at supercoopsquad. So, listener mail. Uh, this uh, first email is in response to our listener question, which is um, if, you ha- if you open the door and saw the worst enemy you could possibly think of from a video game that you fought or, 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 or would just be afraid of, which video game villain would that be and why? So uh, we had a couple of, of nice ones here. This is uh, from Sergio. Uh, Garrett, go ahead and read that first electronic mail. Sergio says, honestly, I know this is going old school, but Nemesis from Resident Evil 3, it was an unstoppable juggernaut. 